I'm not a chew toy, T-Rex. Hey, hey, boy. You like Olaf? Here. Olaf. Please. Hey, hey, hey. Alright, welcome back to SOS. I'm Stats Iron Badass. Alright, today we're going to cover some more firepower for uh, your inch bag. Now, I did the multi-cow for the judge a while back and a lot of people digged it so I figured I would show you some other options today. I think it helps. I think it helps a lot. Firearms is a big deal. But if you can't have a firearm, you got a machete. Alright, let's pull over here. Alright, you might remember from my survival series when I did the survival bag series I included this. This was my US survival rifle. And I carry it on every backpacking trip so if I'm going to make something for my inch bag, I'm not going to stash away something that I grab often. And if I'm putting something away, I don't want to, you know what I mean? I, I love shooting this thing. It's a lot of fun. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull this out. <laughs> but I need to make another leather, uh, another leather carrier for this thing. I'll do another video on that in the future. Probably tomorrow. I already got it out. Might as well. So this, if you're a minimalist, this would be all you would need. There's seven different calibers going on there. Seven. That's seven different types of bullets. But I'll get into that in just a second. I'm just going to get the elephant out of the room. This guy here, and then we're going to get to this. 5.56. Five, These are just your green tips. These are on stripper clips. There are ten rounds on each stripper clip. Most people know that. But if... I am going to pack up 120 rounds, right? And I got a question for you guys and gals. What do you think I should do? Because I'm thinking about, these are 40 round Magpul mags for my AR pistol. Yes, I said pistol, it's an AR pistol. So my AR pistol, and you can take down game with this if you need to. You get... Okay, so accuracy testing this thing, I'm uh, I'm roughly at 200 yards. And any more than that, it's going to be strictly luck. You better cross your fingers and pray. But 200 yards, you can get it done. But average 150, 100 yards, that's, that's your thing right there with this guy. But security, uh, patrolling, uh, protecting your camp. All this other stuff that goes with it. Just self-defense. I mean, when it comes to defending yourself, this is it right here. This will do the trick. There's nothing wrong with it. I've, I've, a lot of guys and gals have emailed me and asked if I would bring this up in a, in, in a topic. So, why not? Why not? What, what do you think? What do you guys and gals think? Because I've had a lot of people say that they've got oddball type weapons that they would prefer to use in a bug out bag because of this reason. Now this is one of the reasons why they chose this and why I'm using it for this video. And I'm going to put it in my bag because I'm kind of right there with them because I agree with them when it comes to this. I like the way this goes. Set that down right there. Drop. Drop. Now I've got, this is already shimmed, just so you know, it's already got the, the uh, pegged in there. So, this is a pistol <clears throat> buffer tube. Now, if you're going to build a pistol, you need a pistol bus buffer tube to get it, get it done. And uh, it it is, there's no uh, no way you can put a stock on this thing unless you get the, uh, uh, the arm brace, the SIG arm brace. So, they make different colors of SIG arm brace too. But anyways, this is a standard setup. Nothing unusual, a few extra bells and whistles in this guy here. Don't need to get too far into it. It does have a bad lever. That's in the event. I'll show you real quick and as soon as I show you this right here. I've already got the, uh, the these are not iron sights obviously, but they are iron sights, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, to do your elevation on a Magpul, op, on Magpul sights uh, for your backup sights, they call them backup sights. They're not meant really meant to be primaries, but you can use them as a primary, and I do. Uh, I use this. The front is for my elevation because you don't have an elevation set up in the rear like most rifles. So you do have your windage. 
So you can't adjust your windage from left to right, but your elevation is going to come from the front. Now they give you a fancy little tool, but you don't really need the tool. You can just simply use a 5.56 five, round. Let me just get one of them out real quick in case somebody wants to know. Someone's going to want to know. Let's show them real quick. So you can get a 5.56 five, round. You just press it right down in there, just like this. And you see that that goes down? Just like that. Boom. But they make these little tabs here so you can push them in. But just push it in there like that and then give it a spin. Just like that. And it'll raise it up and down. That's the one bad part about this is, is that. But your elevation comes from the front. So you can't do your elevation in the rear and in the front. Which doesn't matter. It's a pistol. So you're not going to be too worried about elevation anyways. So, uh, But there's that. And most of the parts that I get for a rifle, I shop around for. But everybody knows my background here in rifles and, and, and weapons and all that jazzy stuff. But building a, um, if you're building a rifle or if it's a pistol like this one, you can, you don't have to buy a charging handle that already has the extended components. You can buy just this. It's like, you know, three bucks or something. You can get just this. And then just, uh, Put your pin, just replace your pin. That's all you got to do. Just knock that pin out and put your new one in. It's just right there. It's real simple. So it's not a big deal to save some money because a regular charging handle is, if you buy, if you go buy a rifle or you go buy a pistol and it comes with a charging handle, why go buy a new charging handle when you just need that one part? See what I'm saying? That's kind of why I say those things. And this is a, a free float key mod. Um, low profile so you go to eBay and <laughs> this is how I do this right go to eBay and look for low profile free float handguards key mods if you want key mod they make all the different other mods too but you don't have to get key mod but it does come with all the little rails and stuff if you want to add stuff to it and uh, when it comes to a pistol you know there's there's laws that go with that so you don't add a forward grip and all this jazzy stuff. So just keep all that stuff in mind before you go slapping everything in the kitchen sink on it. You want it to be light, and that's why I built it. I wanted it to be a pistol, and that's what I like. So this is for a pack. Going into my pack, it can sit like this, and I don't have to worry about it sitting like this. So I would rather it set like this and all the way at the bottom because my weight's at the bottom instead of my weight being all the way at the top or like this. I, I just don't want all that weight uh, distribution all jacked up. I want it in one spot so I can layer it. But, uh, anyways, this is the pistol gas tube. This is a low profile gas block. And that's the, you just get the slim key mod free float uh, for this thing. And that's how you look that up if any of you are looking. And it's just a standard bolt, standard bolt carrier with the uh, American flag on it. Stars are forward. Enemies that way, just so you know. Uh, got this set up the way I like it and then real quick I'll show you one more feature that this has that I think is really cool I do it to all of my rifles because when I get to shooting just so just in case I mean just in case you do have to do a mag change one thing that I do that's a little bit different than everybody else I do this right here is your bad lever. So you've got this guy right here, and then all I do when it locks to the rear, right? Bolts to the rear, and then I put a new mag in. You know, I need to put another mag in just like that, whatever. And then I just hit this, and then it drives a new round in just like that. So I don't have a lot. I don't have to reach over and do this number when I could just go like that and do the same thing. So that's, that's one thing that I like to do. But this will fit right in the bottom of your pack. So with the length of this and then the length of this, they'll set right, right beside one another at the very bottom and not sitting up like this. And then I can stack my mags right on top of them however I see fit. One thing I wanted to know though, should I vacuum seal, should I vacuum seal this 5.56 ammo? Now it being 5.56, I've got to say everything, don't I? It being 5.56, it still shoots 2.23, just not as accurately as 5.56 because a 5.56 rifle is the chambering, okay? It's just the way it's set up with the bottleneck. Uh, you can look all that stuff up, like 2.23 wild barrels will shoot 2.23 and 5.56, five, 
more accurately than a 5.56 barrel. 5.56 just shoots 5.56 better. And but if you've got a wild better barrel, it shoots 5.56 better. It's it's just a mix of stuff when it comes to that caliber. So <clears throat> the 5.56 and 2.23 are different for all of you out there that uh, don't know. I just told you. So these hold 40 rounds. These are 40 round Magpul mags, and so each one of these, this is 10 rounds each. And if that's 30, uh, it's going to take that, and then it'll take like one of these. And then it'll take this, and then it'll take one more of these. So I'm going to be left with this. Now, should I vacuum seal each individual mag, or should I vacuum seal this, this, and this separately? I have different options, right? I just kind of want to throw it out there just in case. Now that I got that out of the way, that's what's going in the back right there. Security, all that jazzy stuff. But now... Let's get to the seven caliber craziness. All right. Everybody's seen me talk about the judge. What about something else? What about a Bond Arms Texas Defender? What about that? All right. So these are uh, your Hornady Critical Defense, which I highly recommend for any judge or um, or handgun that shoots 410, definitely. But if you shoot one of these out of a rifle, it's ridiculous. It Out of a shotgun. A 410 shotgun is ridiculous if you shoot these out of it. These are critical defense. This thing is insane what it does to a target out of a shotgun version of a 410. But what if I don't want to shoot just that? And the other thing, you can get different barrels for this. You don't have to have the 2.5. You can get a 4-inch barrel for it. You can just buy the 4-inch barrel and replace it. Or you can just go ahead and buy the Snake Slayer, which comes with a longer grip. And also comes with a longer barrel. So there's another option for you. But everybody knows I'm a big groupie of the short lane adapters because I love short lane adapters. Yes, that's 22 ammo. All right. But there's your 45 Colt. So I've got 10 rounds of 45 Colt and I've got 10 rounds of shotgun. So, or 410, right? So now these coming out of the end of this barrel is like a sawed off shotgun. It is ridiculous. This is. Triple lot buck, and it is insanity when you shoot it out of this. It's not meant to be fired out of this. It's not meant. This is not meant to be fired out of a judge. I'm telling you right now, this is meant to be fired out of a judge. A lot of people get it confused. That's what you fire out of a governor. That's what you fire out of a judge. It's what you fire out of a bond arms. If you want some accuracy, right? But if you don't want accuracy and you've got like a carjack situation, that's what you want. Something really close is what you want. That. Now that's that's the thing you get right there. So, but what about twenty-two? There's twenty-two. Do they work in this? This is short lane. Short lane adapters. I love short lane. They're so awesome. So twenty-two right there. It doesn't matter which direction it goes. It, it doesn't matter. Now what else we got here? Here we go. Nine millimeter. Everyone's favorite. Boom. Boom! Now I've got a Bond Arms uh, uh, a Bond Arms loaded up, the Texas Defender loaded up with some 22 and some 9 millimeter. All right. Now, one thing that you need to know about a uh, Bond Arms when you see the tab back there, it's easier to show you if I do it one more time. Here we go. See how it raises up? That raises up because it's going to hit that top one first. So I know my 22 will be the first to fire. Now, I pull the trigger, boom. I fired the first barrel, this top barrel here. Then, I, boom, it goes back one more time. You see how it went down? And now I've got this one down here at the bottom up. Now it's ready to hit that bottom barrel. That's how that works. So then it's 9 mil. So I'm just going around and I'm, you know, hunting or whatever. You know, I'm just going to get a squirrel. And, uh, you know, I side in, I get my squirrel, boom. And then I'm ready to go home now. I got my squirrel. It's going to take more than one squirrel to fill you up, just so you know. All right, so then you're on your way home and you got your 9 mil loaded. So, uh, well, it's just it's just options, right? You could get multiple barrels. So you can switch this thing on. Instead of buying a different barrel for one of these things, they're expensive to buy a barrel for a Bond Arms. Why not just change your calibers out? 
it's that simple. All you got to do, if you want a 22 Bond Arms, why go buy another Bond Arms? Just get two of these. You got two of these, now you got 22. So if I want a 9 mil Bond Arms, get two of those, right? That's how that works. But then there's 30, um, uh, this is uh, 380 Auto. This is 32 mag. And this is 38 special. There you go. So that's a lot of different, a lot of different, uh, you know, redundancy, right? You know, you got to have redundancy, right? You got to have options. Uh, this is sidearm. Now, a mag, when a rifle goes cold or a pistol goes cold, whatever it is that you're using as your primary, this is would be this would be my primary. If it ran out of ammo, why would I just dump mags, throw another mag in? What if it's... What if it's awkward? What if it's faster for me to grab my sidearm, right? Because my sidearm will be at my side, right? So you put it in your holster, just like that, right? Okay, I guess I should push it down more, right? It's all right, Boom, just like that. Now, when I'm on a trail or something like that, I could scout carry this behind my back, left-hand side, right-hand side, doesn't matter, but I've got my primary here, I tossed this guy out of the way. I ran out of ammo. 40 rounds, right? <laughs> if you dump 40 rounds into something, boy, it's a major situation. And uh, two probably ain't going to solve the problem. But, but whatever, okay? I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, so this isn't doing the trick or whatever it is. You toss it to the side and you grab your firearm, right? Now, the reason why the retention strap's important in a bug out scenario, what if you're on a trail? What if you slip and fall or whatever? You know, if you slip and fail and this thing didn't have a retention strap in it, it's just going to flop right out of there, right? What if you fall backwards, right? And it just goes falling out like that. And then you don't know what happened and you just get up and you're moving and you left your gun there. That's one thing I like about retention straps. But anyway, it's just an option, right? Redundancies. But now, you've got multi cal, you got seven other calibers, and you've got something that can uh, work for patrolling, securing your camp, and things like that, keeping everybody safe, and yourself safe, and taking down a game if you need to, taking down a large game, I don't know, what if it's a turkey, you know, pump, pump like four or five rounds into a turkey, there you go, and uh, cook that bird up, and you got something to eat, but it's options, right, so it's much easier for me to do this, and still have my 22 ammo, it's 100 rounds, 100 rounds of 22, 10, 45 Colt, 10, uh, 410 shot shell, and 120 556. Five, Most common gun in the United States is this one. You know, pistol, rifle, doesn't matter. I can find parts, I can find whatever I need to do what I need to do with this in the meantime to keep this thing on the road and going versus having something that's not commonly seen and I would be a little bit better off in an inch bag situation, just throwing it out there. But you could do this and this. Could you imagine me carrying all that though? It's it's just a lot, but I'll just keep it light and simple, super light and simple. Bring it all in, bring it all in like that. There we go. Just lay that over like that. Like that. There you go. That's one of those screenshots that everybody posts up. Looks like one of those thumbnails that all the other channels do. Looks cool, doesn't it? I should just take a picture of that. Look at all this crap. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, there you go, right there. Tomorrow, I'm hoping that I can either, I can do navigation, navigational items, and maybe comms, get that out of the way and just be done, and then put the bag together. I'm hoping I can finish it up, and uh, I will get it done this week, and it will be done. And then, the next one that we're moving on to will be the next Bug Out Bag series, and everyone's, I think everyone's going to get a kick out of this one. They're really going to like what I'm doing next. I, I have bigger plans, bigger stuff, and cooler stuff. And I think it's going to be easier. People can grab just like that. And I, the firearm selections that I have for the next one, people are really going to dig those. I think people are really going to like that. I think even Dave Cadbury will come give me a hug and we'll have a barbecue together. I think it's going to happen. But hope you enjoyed it. You're watching SOS. I'm Stas Badass. Have a beautiful, fabulous, fantastic day. And try to take it easy. Don't let anybody screw your day up. You keep on moving.